Prepare yourself for a sprawling discussion on just about anything, where critical thinking meets pop culture in a collision of mind-bending proportions. Please secure all neurons and prepare for full frontal cortex. It's time for Incoherent Ramblings. Ah! 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 So just trying to scare people. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the next episode of Inquiry Ramblings. I'm your host, Joey Shamble. We also got Ed's editorial. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Hunter, <laughs> Kale Anderson, and General Shores. <laughs> not scaring anybody anymore, so yeah. uh, that really didn't work either. We're We're scary scary it's over. And yeah. Annoying the audience. Yeah, pretty much. So anyway, uh, to this episode is episode 44. We're doing uh, Daryl's choice, even though he's not feeling it. Vices. Put Joey on fast is... forward. Wait, what? We got a minute. We're doing Daryl's choice. You? You? No Sophie. excuse. Slow it down. No, no. <laughs> I talk fast. It's what I, I want do. to see Joey on Red Bull. It's what I do. <laughs> you say talk. That would be awesome. It's five hour energy. Does okay, about the same thing. What is it? Yes. So anyway, <laughs> today is going to be Vices. Our sponsor for Vices is, of course, Crockett and Tubbs, because... <laughs> Remember, you can reach us at uh, show at iamrambling.com. Show notes. Show at iamrambling.com. And, uh... See? The minute lasts for a long so. time. All right. That's what, free ramble. That's what I tell free, every night. Free ramble. Oh, free free ramble. ramble. It is the free ramble. Free ramble. Free ramble. Free ramble. My preamble is that I'm gonna go get food. Bye. Okay. Well. Oh, okay. Okay. Now. Bring some back. He's out on the road. <laughs> Here's Ed. Bye, Ed. Bye. 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 Here's Ed's editorial, direct from the Fa Place. Greetings. This is Ed's editorial. Thank you very much. And this is. And this, okay. Uh, there's the egg rolls right there. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Once again, Ed's editorial reporting from Folicious. I've gotten my orders and I am bringing back uh, egg rolls and pho from Folicious. On the way back, the gang doesn't know. Holding the door open for a nice gentleman. Hey, how are you? Uh, we're, this, is, I believe, is the first time soup will be consumed during the podcast, so it's rather exciting for me. Don't know how exciting it will be for others, apart from them eating spring rolls. Once again, found Felicious on Yelp, and that it's down the street from where Kale lives. For all you incoherent rambling stalkers out there, because I know there are so many. And uh, yeah, headed back. Bye for now. Once again, Ed's editorial with incoherent ramblings. Podcast. Damn it. Phone went off. <laughs> Dude, okay, I think that's going to be your pre ramble. Yeah. That's the last part. You are recording off. every week and we'll yeah. answer it. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> East Prospect in the future with Joey. So today, what I've got is um, this is from Ray Kurzweil because he's the, you know the Singularity guy. Hey, you're not allowed to do this. Is it Kurzweil? Kurzweil. Kurzweil, where's your papers? And so uh, he's about to get his I Ubi. Think he has papers. Which is our, which is the ubiquitous computer. Ubi. That's a yes. show. Isn't it's, it? Well, no, it's actually Ubi. an ubi- ubiquitous computer. It's like the whole. Uh, a Jarvis thing. He it, it apparently plugs into his wall, and it's then he can just kind of talk to his wall or talk to his room and talk to the hand. It's <laughs> talk to the hand. It's like blue milk. No, but it what says. Um, I'll, say according to the promo, it's like talking to a wall here. <laughs> I'll be able to plug it into a power outlet, and the Wi-Fi connected voice operated Ubi gadget will magically make the environment around me internet enabled. Think mm. an environment. Aware version of Siri with sensors that allow for remote monitoring of temperature, humidity, air pressure, and ambient light for starters. So I think that's pretty cool because that's kind of like the next step that we're all looking for. Where you just be like, "Hey, Jarvis, uh, make me a sandwich, bitch." So <laughs> Siri could find out when you're excited. <laughs> yeah. He knows when you're asleep. <laughs> <laughs> knows if you've been bad or good. Oh, it's Santa. <laughs> it's Santa Siri. Oh, oh, oh. It's not Santa Christ, right? <laughs> Santa Claus! <laughs> Which is Joe, by the way. Check the show notes. <laughs> anyway, so I think that's going to be really pretty cool because, uh, you know, everything I do on this new segment is is going to the future. And uh, I love the idea of just being able to talk to the room instead of looking something up on my phone. Like, Dude, how do I get this to work? But so, when you have a phone that has those features, it is kind of like talking to the yeah. room. It doesn't have all the sensors mm-hmm. and stuff. And I, we're getting closer. Yeah. yeah. I like it at home better because I don't like doing it in public where it's like, I'm talking to my phone. No, Hello, I, I, phone. I'm sorry about use cases where I'm at home. Like, yeah. A lot of times I'll be like, you know, cooking something on the stove or whatever, and I don't want to like 
touch the phone because my hands are grimy. And I'm just like, set a timer. All right, pop. Now. Bam. Word of the week. All right, go, Paul. It is our work. All right. You just, you just infracted so many. You know how that's like patented? The, Let's get ready to roll. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just destroyed it. You're going to get sued. Word of the week. <laughs> All right, this week's word of the week is a Gary Coleman. Oh no. oh no! Well, it's got to be something terrible. short and stubby. You know that'd be kind of cool if Brandon's listening because he he actually knew Gary Coleman. So that would be cool. <laughs> that would be maybe, maybe Gary we'll Coleman. offend him because. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So a Gary anyway. Coleman would have to be, like I said, short and stubby, and when it happens to you, you go, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> it's a stubby chubby. <laughs> <laughs> Any guesses, Kale, Daryl, Ed, Ed? What's that, Eddie? Guess. Ed. Oh, and we'll oh, insert here. <laughs> okay, go ahead. All right. Um, wow, Gary Coleman. Uh, oh, okay, gosh. Take little, a okay, little adopted. Guy. All right, go ahead. Okay. Well, okay. An adopted it, penis. It's going somewhere different, but uh, the Gary, Gary Coleman is is actually the the little urinal that's in the bathroom. That's what you call it. So <laughs> it's the urinal that's always located at the far left or right of the line. And it's a significantly okay. lower. It's that's, the handicap urinal, the short person cool. urinal. Oh, so that's, you're using the Gary horrible. Coleman. That's pretty that's cool. We're wrong. using the Gary Coleman. Open up. Oh there we go. <laughs> Zip. Come on, Gary. Oh, yeah, Gary. I'm going to do that. That's that's terrible. What do you call the that tall one? So like Mr. T? Uh, or like and shack. besides, aren't those shack. usually used by like four year olds or something? <laughs> well, like, they, well, they're for they're shorter people. They're diapers. I mean, I you know. Four what about a It's four yeah. people in a wheelchair that gotta like whip it out, and it, they're little people. Or little people, <laughs> dude. I got some little people for. <laughs> hey, for, he uh, came out of the corner. Oh yeah, the little people, barn yeah. animals. <laughs> so, so you're saying uh, little people are barn animals? If we did have, Joey's would you just like to say? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> we ahead. need to have All nothing right. against little people or midgets. <laughs> It is. Wow, that was freaking. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that was a little disgusting, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. tell us how it smells. You were like all up in there smelling. Yeah, I was, and I'm not sure if there was some stuff that <laughs> went <laughs> All right. Do your segment. All right, damn it. Suck it. Oh, segment. Oh, segment. All right. It's ordered carbon nanotubes that increase conductivity of solar cells by 100 million times. Who is it? <laughs> so what it is is basically it increases uh, the conductivity by taking carbon nanotubes and putting them into ordered pairs. Okay, you can go over there. You yeah. can go over there. Right. And you don't have to you use as many, so it takes less, but it increases the conductivity, which means that it keeps more energy than previous version and. Because or rather, of how there's things... less energy waste due to resistance. exactly that's what I meant. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. And so, because that's a of that big factor, though, what? like how, how many? I how know. many? One hundred million. One hundred million times. Wow. So it's it's but then two. again, you know, if the resistance is like <laughs> point one ohms, and it's <laughs> like now it's yeah, point yeah, 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 zero, yeah. zero zero one ohms, it's like um, okay. Uh, well, anyway, yeah, you're right. Hey, hey, hey! Welcome back. Oh wait, no. Alright. <laughs> and pho. Pho this. Is that Ed got some pho. You're, you're gonna, you're gonna to my, yeah. I, did, I did record a segment. It's we'll, we'll cut yeah, it in. We'll, we'll, we'll edit it in uh, later. Okay. We've You'll, got a section. We'll copy later on. Okay, so anyway. anything else, Kale? No, that was it. It was I'm cool. just waiting for the bell. <laughs> then Ed, you came out. <laughs> hey, Ed, what do, you, what do you think a uh, Gary Coleman is on Urban Dictionary? Gary Coleman is when you shit and oh God. you put it in the freezer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and now it's That's time for Tech Talk. Tech Talk, yeah. Yeah, Tech Talk. Okay, so the, the subject that I wanted to bring in this time is this uh, 3D printer called Big Rep. Now, why? Oh, yeah. It's like a T-Rex. Big so rap and the muscle machine. <laughs> the big, bad, dirty, and me. Wasn't that last Now, what's so was, yeah. big about it is that this is a 3D <laughs> printer that uh, can do 1.3 meters. Make one. Used. So, you can actually print things like... Take a watch. Could you print a dildo? I'm sure you could. But <laughs> and could call it Big Red? Could you take one? it? I doubt it. Because <laughs> <laughs> 1.3 meters <laughs> is pretty big. Now, is this something for corporations, or could you buy it? it That's how I keep hearing every time you yeah. yeah. However, um, comparing to um, lathes and uh, other computer-aided devices that can create 3D objects... 
This is much, much less money. It's uh, about twenty thousand dollars. In case you're wondering, guys, in the background, that's Eddie. Gi- I mean, Ed giving lettuce to Linda. Okay, yes. go ahead. Yeah. And that just painted an image in my head I didn't need. To I was see. tossing right. her salad. There we go. Oh. And so what'd you say? Wait, wait, wait. wait a minute. What'd you say? Twenty thousand. So I, I got twenty thousand. I got. Um, no, he can eat again. But it's his time. He's running Thank out of time. Yes, I am no, running out of time. Yeah, eat, Joey. And um, it's materials Groucho. wise, you know, you can they, they have some samples Groucho on their website, bigrep.com, and they have things like it's tables called. that they printed, and um, oh, each table yeah, does use hundreds of dollars of material and can take up to say like two what? weeks to print at large uh, volumes. Okay. However, it's much more affordable than other options that are available <laughs> for industrial use. <laughs> In fact, this I'm one sorry, is where the price might come down enough that it'll be... Gerald, I'm sorry, but none of us are listening to you right <laughs> and, and, uh, uh, This is so not no. fair. He gets another turn at this. The Why? listeners are listening. Did he listening start already? For yeah, it's good. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> All right. Ta-da. All right, Jadine. The listeners are listening, Daryl. That's who is important. <laughs> no, the audience is listening. That's for us. Yeah. Like Pre-rumble, okay. pre-rumble, Woo! pre-rumble. <laughs> Okay. Enough of that BS. <laughs> All right, so today's episode... Right, give me a spring roll. <laughs> Make up for that. Jesus. <laughs> today's episode... You didn't even pray. ...is Vices. <laughs> today's episode is Vices, and we're talking about all the bad stuff that people do. <laughs> mm, so, uh, Daryl, what do you what do you, uh, what do you want to say about Vices? It's your topic. Here's where we get all quiet. Well. <laughs> I was... Uh, <laughs> I was considering vices. Uh, the classical vices are in different categories. So like smoking a cigar? Are, that would be a substance. Like smoking a cigar? Put the freaking thing in your mouth like you're smoking a cigar. Thank you. That was Okay, go. That's what Bill Clinton told Monica. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got substance, substance. You know, I don't just stick things in my mouth on command. That's all you said well, last whether night. Whether or not there's a camera in the room. That's what you said. Okay, go ahead. That's what she said. Thank you, Monica. So classical advice. Classical advice. <laughs> like, um... The you know, old sexual time vices, vices. Substance abuse vices. Um, or whether or not you want to call it abuse, you know. Um, vices of uh, games of chance, gambling, things like that. And then also, I was thinking of gluttony a as being a vice, or overindulgence in things. People usually mm-hmm. consider like that a vice. Large, a large so then, you know, tonight we want to analyze what vices mean to us, who we think has the authority to uh, determine vices. Is the legality of certain vices justified? Are we, you know, should we change the law in any respect? So this isn't so much really taboo. This is just things that are. Taboo it can be taboo, taboo, but it's more along the lines. Illegal in society. But it's something. That, but things that are more popular, like it's not like cannibalism, or. Well, I don't know. Is that really a vice? Right. Exactly. I, I kind of got the wrong idea in my head last time. I was thinking more of taboo. But we're not doing taboo, okay. we're doing vices. Yeah, okay. Some vices are taboo, or many of them are. Right, but we're not doing taboo. Right. So we're doing vices or anything that like, is done in society that is not wholly accepted by society, I guess. And is, Kale yeah. brought up uh, before that, you know, what, your, what was your point about vices? They're, uh, You're asking me days later? <laughs> like, I could remember. You said that there were uh, addictions. Were oh, yeah, addictions, that, right? that's right. Because many, many, uh, I think a lot of times what Good becomes a vice too. is an addict, becomes an addiction. Mm. So, oh, hot, hot. <laughs> <laughs> was that really hot, <laughs> Joey? <laughs> Spices are hot, Damn, dude. Spices are hot, dude. This is my sample. Yeah. I Doc. pulled out. I pulled out some broth. And, Doctor, ready? I'm ready. <laughs> uh, yeah. He's, Paul is making a joke that it looks like urine, which well, it kind of does. Um, apologies for us being more incoherent well, that makes than it usual. Stupid. Daryl didn't want to do it. We're so. pretty incoherent. Dude, and he brought this the first time we ever freaking ate <laughs> during a pod. Thanks, so Ed. Unprofessional. I love it. Uh, wait, right. we, we were professional? Oh. I never said that. Oh. Oh, well, what was that, Joey? I was laughing for Was that mouth. French or. <laughs> you did take French. Oh. You know, I gotta ask what the word I can't laugh with food. Oh, it's hot in my Oh, Joey's um, burning the inside of his mouth with the spoon <laughs> roll. <laughs> Drink your liquid. <laughs> Some might say hey, that's a vice, right? Some there. might say eating too fast is a vice. Yes, yeah. he was pointing out. I, I, I think oh. this podcast is a vice. Yeah. <laughs> True. If you try to listen to all them in a row, totally bad. It's for uh, unethical. <laughs> yeah, we already did ethics and morality. This is hot. See, Ow. see, Ow. so. 
Okay. Is it? Is this just F bomb? Okay? Yeah. This is okay for. Okay. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. it, I had hot liquid in my hand, and <laughs> I'm about to have it in a bowl. And then, Ooh, like hot liquid. I keep thinking it's like that's he's uh, gonna soak wow. his Velveeta. Okay. Velveeta yeah. cheese. Ooh, that is the hottest, most steamy urine I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. Who determines the vices? Is it uh, society as a whole, religion? Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. All of the above. Government. Old people. Author- authority. <laughs> old people. O- old people. <laughs> like that. Yeah. Mostly, yeah. Well, yeah, because if you think about it, things that become accepted aren't really vices anymore, right? If we society also- accepts something, is it a vice? Like, let's talk... Well, okay, let's talk about alcohol. Perfect example. Well, we're, we're also talking about, like, who has the authority to determine what's okay. a vice or not. <laughs> okay, just a little aside here. Eddie, did they make anything for you that you bought, or is it just... <laughs> <laughs> He's pulling out vegetables <laughs> and soup. It's like, here, pay us $10 yeah, bought, and we'll you give you the ingredients. It yourself. <laughs> it's a fun make it yourself. <laughs> Shit. Do it yourself. All they did, all they did was heat up your bra. It's like, it's like it's pop, yeah, that's it. Right? That's it. It's it's like going to pop a dildo. Go you know? fight yourself. <laughs> I, I did fight myself. <laughs> okay, and I'm gonna put the meat in. No, did I they cook the meat. No, I actually, it's not even cooked. I actually. Oh my god! You're supposed to cook. That's the broth. gross, dude. The broth, it's 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 yeah. It's no great. kidding. I I just now, you know, innocently. Wait, said, that's gonna cook it. Eddie brought in a kit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. so no wonder why it has nice. to be so hot because you it has to, to cook noodles. So you ha- you can't eat it right now. I, I'm going wait. to eat it right. I'm going to eat it in a second because the liquid okay. is Dude, supposed to cook. Dude, podcast. <laughs> it's, it's a vice eating raw I'm meat. sorry, we're cooking here. <laughs> yeah. Dude, Dude, the cooking we're, not, we're not incoherent <laughs> cooking. The the podcast is intruding on our cooking show. It's raw. No, and I'm going oh. to pour more broth in here. Okay, I'm adding broth to a uh, mixture. Oh my god. Uh, Seriously, my meat is still red. Okay. And I'm, no, I'm adding more broth. Okay. It has this ginger kind of... Kind of you smell ginger? So why don't we watch Jurassic Park? <laughs> <laughs> I poured the entire solution hey, sure over the sure went off the rails <laughs> really, really <laughs> fast. All of you Jurassic Park. <laughs> All right, so back I'm to stirring. vices. No, I'm stirring. So, I've tried already, Kale. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, yeah, I, I think as... I'm adding the sauce. Religious authorities... That's, that's, those are it's probably the, the first. Bible Belt and stuff. Yeah, and then the Ooh, old that's school. a good base. Well, they're the ones We're who gonna gonna came up and it. actually Stir said what the actual vices are. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, the yeah. religious authorities. Okay, uh, but it was kind of dumb. What I was saying was a little. What I was saying. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, take your duty to shut up. You freaking asswipe. That's what I can do with show. It's editorial. Yes, it's my little editorial. Yeah, his editorial is about the. All right, all right, go ahead. Okay, it looks like you had a massive diarrhea in that bowl. Well, All right, continue, Joey. Is yes. that plum sauce? Well, we'll have the silent. So. We'll have the sauce. silent editorial, so we can get back okay. to the bar. Is it whatever the hell that that other? Wait, I think that's hoisin plum sauce. sauce, right? Hoisin. hoisin. Uh, you you want to try some? Tell me. Yeah, I'll try some. <laughs> it's Daryl's vice to get is getting is getting sidetracked. Wait, by can can I lick it? Does you it can lick it. No, I'm done. I'm done. Here. Well, well, I, I, I some, think some no. I think this is important because I always ask that before. There are people out there. That their vice to rip off people oh, yeah, like Eddie mm-hmm. buying this shit good, that he yeah. had to cook himself. <laughs> no, they, they, they could have been water had I known about. Okay, so now oh, that hey, did the meat us. change color? Ooh, look at this. I've got some. I've got bit, some yeah. sprouts. All right, right. Too, some bean sprouts. Look at this. Dude, look my meat changed this. color too. <laughs> You're not gonna stop, are you? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm, well, I'm explaining. This is you my answer. Have a bean sprout. Have a bean sprout. Would you like a bean sprout, Jack? I'm okay, good. Okay. okay, so society <laughs> oh, determines, <laughs> society determines vices. Actually, it's been if you want the truth, it's I believe it's been the church because the church has been the authority. Yeah. And if if you're not going to heaven for it, well then you know what you can't have sex with animals in that. You know <laughs> what? <laughs> so we had that discussion before. It's mm. worse than necrophilia. So. <laughs> Yeah. Well, the dead. Sheep. What was the next subject? <laughs> dead sheep don't. Hell if I know. <laughs> so we're going to talk about why are our uh, vices a taboo subject? We oh, did, wait, we didn't even get to the last one. We need to do the last one over. What's, what's the last one? All right. Yeah. We, yeah, one. we didn't. We didn't. Who determines vices? It. Well, I, they were saying it's it's basically authority figures. I was going on something, and then like they're the all whole, right. Go. Well, then don't sidetrack extend. yourself. Okay, extend. Ding. All right, so. The question is, what about beer? Is that considered a vice? It's legal, it's accepted, or just, or we'll say alcohol as a whole. Is it something that is uh, is accepted when it's um, just 
In moderation. Overuse? It's similar to, like, candy, right? Like, if you abuse it, then you're, in most people's eyes, considered that you're committing a vice or a sin. Overindulgence in it. Okay, but... Well, well, what but, it could lead to. Okay, but... Then, then in some cultures, like, um... You know, drinking on a Sunday is not allowed. Right. And that would be a vice just automatically, no matter whether or not how much you imbibe. Okay, so the question is, then, it, 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 people who decide what vices are, can the change and become not a vice? I'm sure if their will is there. I that, think yeah, that's be. what determines the vice is that it becomes... Abused. Abused. Okay. So is there anything that is a vice? But some is, things are vices well, whether or not yeah. they're abused, like sodomy. <laughs> Uh, I don't think that. Uh, so back to my noodle soup. So unless you, no, I mean, you so can't have too much you can't stick it in there, and then you know, like if you choose to, then you're automatically that may a be, I and, think sodomy you know. would be a taboo, but not a vice. Mm. What's the difference okay. between a taboo and a vice? See, that's, the that's abuse. What I was asking before. So abuse, a vice is so something vices that is abused. are abused. Taboos is just. But Daryl, that's what you're saying. Like there's something and quite that, often there are addictions. Like some things that are not. Abuse. I think some things aren't abused and Sodomy are still considered a vice. Like okay. prostitution, for example. Like you commit prostitution once, that's illegal, that's considered a vice. But in some people's eyes, prostitution is just a business deal. Mm-hmm. You know? So like so the thing is, abusing it or not, it's considered a vice by some people and right, some right. governments. Right? And the same thing with sodomy. Sodomy is outlawed in certain places. You do it once and then it becomes part of what Vice Squad would investigate. <laughs> So. Oh yeah! Yeah, I never thought about that. I thought Miami Vice was just like, oh mm. my god, <laughs> the revelation. Well, the the revelation reason, happening now. The reason I didn't interrupt him is because this yeah. next subject is about vices and taboos. What vices are taboos and the taboo subject, and what are the differences? So we're saying vices can be a taboo that is not abused. But I, oh, I'm nodding. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. So okay, vices are taboos that are not abused. Or things that are not taboos but get abused. Does that make sense? No. Damn it. I'm saying that so, if it's something that's not very abused, slippery over there. It, it's so, <laughs> I think some, he's abusing that bull. <laughs> if it's something that's not abused, it's a taboo. That's what makes it a vice. Um, <laughs> if it, if it's not, not abused, it's a that's taboo. Not if it's abused, it's it a doesn't vice. have to be a taboo. No, no, no. I'm it's, saying it's, it's the same thing. Taboo. If 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 it's not approved of socially, religiously, legislatively, right. it's 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 both. It's a taboo and it's a vice. I, I think a vice is more kind of something that's an addictive behavior. Yeah, Where a taboo like, is just social. Because like taboo, mm-hmm. you don't want to so like say the n word around African Americans, right? So, but that is not a vice. Yeah, I have to start agreeing a little bit more that it's not a taboo. Some vices can be taboos, but not all taboos are vices. Is this thing on? Yeah. <laughs> but, I, but no, but is it a vice if you, like, go back to pornography? Or not pornography. <laughs> well, that's a good example, pornography. Yeah, pornography, yeah. just dirty pictures, people doing it. Is, it. is it a vice if you're not doing it in an addictive way? I would oh, say no. Many people would consider it Well, see, so. that's the thing. Is it depends so, on your point of view. You, you when you're talking about vices... It's so much opinion yeah. that really there's going to be. You can always find somebody that's going to say it's a vice. Yeah, this is yeah. not an objective subject. It's uh, so. So yeah. we're looking at it as two things. Once mm-hmm. again, we're looking at it as something that can be abused but accepted, mm-hmm. or something that's not accepted and doesn't, abused but doesn't need to be abused. abused. Oh yeah, okay. because like in pornography, some people would say it's a vice if you do it it's once. It's abusive when it like comes to kids. Right. Like, but yeah. some people would say pornography is is a vice if you do it one time and you're not abusing it. So that's right. what I'm saying. Is and some, that's what makes it a taboo. Right, and that's what makes it a taboo. Okay, right. so then the question is, why are these things taboos? Is it because people decide they are? It's the people we talked about? Society they, hasn't accepted it as a part of our culture. For, ev- we, for everyone. We already established that it's uh, a very um, subjective field. So, yeah, I think like just every everything would be permitted if no one... Um, cast judgment upon the action, right? I cast judgment on you! Like, if you're in the wild and you're doing all these different animals. things... Animals. Yeah, wild animals. <laughs> you're, doing, you're doing animals. Jeez. Um, Speaking but of you know, It's like you could be free, um, but then society puts pressure on you, or your peers will put pressure on you to uh, discontinue certain mm. behaviors that they for the children. judge you for. You know, they deem them inappropriate. And as a greater society, we've established laws, rules, um, 
decorum, you know, all these things that that and it changes over time. Which behavior. is, you know, it's a good point actually. If um, if you look at uh, a lot of a lot of vices or things that are first at first maybe abused. No, no, at first are not. <laughs> ring a ding ding. <laughs> <laughs> Well, moving, moving on, ping. Moving on to sexual vices, addiction, porn, prostitution, infidelity, which is what we're talking about anyway. Sure. So actually, this leads into what I was saying, which is um, these things are not accepted at first. They're considered taboos, vice-like taboos. You do it once, it's bad. Then they become accepted over time as generations change, and then they become only if you are abusing it. Right. If you have a <clears throat> sexual addiction. And right. I think a lot of, uh, I'm sorry, I just cut you off. No, that right. is just and that's kind of, of sexual addiction is kind of the easy way out on on all these infidelity cases and stuff. It's like oh, okay, right, if, a sexual addiction, and, and that's as what, if that made it okay. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, think they, religion has had Tiger the most Woods. to say about um, sexual things, especially in our culture in America. We we have kind of a really, um, uh, I'm trying to think of the word for it. Victorian it's, puritanical, yeah, yeah, puritanical kind of view on sexual behavior. And it, it, if we're all very and a quiet, lot of it is religious based because if you think about some of the things that aren't allowed, it's if, like well, um, just to cut you off, we're quiet. You can hear what sexual addiction sounds like. <laughs> huh. oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> um, yeah, because a lot of the things are like you know we've. I think a lot of our laws were based on religious points of view, like um, ideas about oh, like. Yeah. Gay sex being illegal, and then like certain kinds of sexual behavior in the bedroom being illegal in certain jurisdictions. Yeah, that's true. Because yeah. it's like you know, why why should there why should two individuals who consensually agree to something in their own privacy have the and they have safe over words? Them? And that's just ba basically Flamingo. overreaching morality, Pineapple. moral, moral <laughs> code being legislated. So. Well, and that's true. Well, people uh, want to. Is it Congress's business to? Yeah, exactly. Get them out of the bedroom. Well, stop you're watching me at night, Santa. Unless you're into that, <laughs> <laughs> you ubi in the wall. Or or I, I can only get aroused when I know the government's looking at my sodomy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, if you if you look at like what what people wear at the like at the beach now, or what I try like, not to. <laughs> boys and girls wear. Compared to like 50, 60 years ago. Sure. I mean, if they went back in time, they'd be like, oh my God, we're, we're naked. Right. Mm -hmm. You know. That's that, why I that, like watching, um, was it Hot for Teacher by Van Halen? Because that was a groundbreaking video when it came out. Just yeah. To like, show oh a woman on stage with a bikini that's going up her ass. I mean, she might as well have been naked. That's groundbreaking. Mm -hmm. But these norms change over time. And what we're talking about because of our age group, there are things now, sex related, that people of a younger demographic consider recreational. We considered it taboo when we were in high school. Now it's considered recreational and it's widely accepted. For instance, teenage girls having a, you know, not being bisexual, but having a girlfriend in addition to their boyfriend, that's normal when you get to high school. And that's a status symbol. And for some of us, it was more taboo than others. I remember when I was in high school, I, we read this article saying 80% of all high school students have had sex. And I went, what? <laughs> <laughs> no way! Nobody told me! Nobody <laughs> told me this! And you I'm obviously the 20%. Yeah, you should help yeah. us sign. I'm a 20%. I'm a 20%. <laughs> you would have been ahead of your time. And we all marched on Wall Street or yes. some crap like that. Yes, need to have sex. Pure Humped really. on Wall Street. Yeah. Hump on Wall Street. Hey. Well, and prostitution. I mean, that's something that I think is uh, a good thing. Yeah, and it's <laughs> it saves a lot of problems. It walking does. Well, well, walking in the uh, red light district of all places to in Tunisia, Tunis, the capital city. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it smelled like that too. What the was but that? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what you wouldn't find if, find that in in your usual Arabian country. But you uh, find we, it there. Dinged. <laughs> and honestly, what the cab driver said we about dinged. it. Nope. What the local what the local said. Extend, extend, are you yes. Extend. Extend. He's All extending. Right. Extending. All right. Okay. All right. So what did the local Keep cab going driver now. say? Now you can go on. What did he say? Then? I, 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 I love the know. I love the know. He just said it solves. He said something obvious. He said it solves more. It solves a lot of problems. What problems did it solve? Sexual tension. As mm -hmm. going out. But what about like the exploitation of the women? If you saw those women, those women like they honestly look like they 
fell out of the ugly tree and hit every single branch. You know, but yeah, if you wow, want that's, some uh, tension, but the, no, that's what release. I mean. No, but the the live, I mean the 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 sex tree, the training mm-hmm. and everything. Yes. So that's okay. Yeah. So to well, well in that tension. in that district, well, I mean, if the woman, issues. if, if no, the woman no, no, no. is consenting to it, listen to what he's saying. Forced, he's saying sex trade. But he's saying forced and prostitution. Sex trade. Right? Yes. Yeah. I mean, for sure, people forced is become, definitely wrong. They use the sex thing is, for the sex trade. Here's but another, I'm saying prostitution is something separate. From I know it. what you're getting at, Paul, yeah. because you know it's easy to human easy to, slavery and like having this human trafficking. Yeah, human trafficking, forced sex working, and things like that. Obviously, very bad. But then again. A woman who wants to do this for a living, mm-hmm. should there be an authority that tells her no? Right? And I'm not saying that all, all women are free to choose because a lot of them, for whatever reasons, poverty, um, you know, not not having the education that would get them a better paying job or whatever, sometimes is a reason for going into that trade. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if someone truly chooses it, why should we stop? And, but, and, and it's not like, you know, it, would, it should be regulated, and that's the whole thing. If you're forcing someone yeah. to work at... Uh, of course. That, if you're forcing that's someone that's to work wrong. at Walmart, you and, know, you know, and you're... And you're your definition of... <laughs> that's of, bad, you know? But it's regulated. Abuse. You can't force someone to work at Walmart. If you're brought in your definition, be like, too, you, you think about, like, something like acting. Like, if you have to do a nude scene with someone, is that prostitution? Move it on! Yeah. What the <laughs> hell? <laughs> who, who twinkled? All right. Uh, substance abuse, vices, alcohol, drugs, medical addiction, uh, and I think this goes more in, into what we were just talking about as well because uh, it also seems to solve problems when you legalize some of these vices. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, right now, the big thing is pot to begin beginning to become legalized throughout the United States, and I think prostitution in the future will also go that route. But I don't think we're at that point yet. I think as uh, sexuality becomes something that's more accepted, this is just happen. basically Nevada now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I think it's. I, gonna, I don't think it'll go the whole country though. I think eventually it will. I like, I think. Yeah, I think it's going to give it fifty years. Point out, I think eventually. Yeah. I don't. I don't think people. I don't think people will do it. Well, it's, it's, there's, there's, there's too many religious though. people in this country. But not in, not in fifty years. Religion. Yeah, is religion's kinda, going out. With, yeah, I it, think I think it's going to be like a generational thing. Like in a generation or two, people are going to care less about it. Sex won't be such a forward. big deal. And another thing is that um, I think that a <laughs> lot of people. Sex is always going to be a big <laughs> deal, Joey. Uh, <laughs> I know. Evolutionary uh, psychology. I know. It's, I think it's because kind of it's a, only important if you're not getting it. I know. <laughs> I think one of the trends that I, I can see also is um, this kind of like live and let live mentality like it's almost a libertarian mentality that a lot of people are adopting it's basically like whether or not something is your bag like you know is this my bag of hemp like i might not want to smoke it myself but i'm not willing to stand there and say i'm going to forbid everyone else from doing it and i think that's 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 what religion does all the time yeah right they 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 force they become nannies and go i'm going to tell you how to yeah. yeah, because well, it's not good, what for about me, legal it's not drugs. good for you. What about legal drugs? I mean, yeah, that's tobacco, a, that's a alcohol, and mm-hmm. everything. You know, there are and medicinal uses. Caffeine, of medical drugs, drugs too. Caffeine you know, that are equally can be. You know, Fruity we're talking about vices and stuff like that. <laughs> Sugar. So you know, yeah. we go into this well. compulsive shopping. What if you're a compulsive shopper that every time you walk by a pot store, you've got to buy some pot? You turn something innocent into something, and you, you know it doesn't need to be clothes or something like that. But we're talking. You know, moving from taboos to vices and what have you. And you bring up medicine. I mean, like, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, how many celebrities, including Michael Jackson, have overdosed on prescription medications that were just overprescribed or they were given access to more of it than they were supposed to be taking? It's still the golden rule. Elvis couldn't get prescriptions. The doctor wouldn't write them for him. So what did he do? He bought a pharmacy. The golden (laughs) rule. He with the gold rules. These rules, these taboos, they don't really apply to you. In this, in a capitalistic society, if you have the money to get out of it, because even right. if you do get in trouble, you can hire. What pharmacy? Yeah. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. quite CBS. often you can <laughs> save on. <laughs> wow, that's... save on, save on. <laughs> Dated myself there. So there, are things are, there are things that are unacceptable, but that's you know that's only ex- <laughs> you the if you accept that. Here. And you know, with this generation, that's really impressive. I mean, the creativity behind it. And the social acceptance is is um, nothing to what we're compared with. I, mean, I think so there's a, an interesting I think one that uh, we've seen change during our lifetime is uh, tobacco. Yeah. It used to be much more accepted when yeah. we were mm-hmm. young. Yeah. And, you know, it's always been, well, quote, legal. However, it's becoming more and more heavily regulated, therefore becoming semi-legal in a way. Mm. But I think it's more of we've learned the, the outcomes of smoking. 
Uh-huh. We've learned the, you know... The, and I think, uh, and it took a long time, but I think that's what's got to happen. Because mm-hmm. what's going to happen right. is simply that it will become a taboo mm-hmm. in the sense that it's really bad for you and bad for people around yeah. you. And then they'll... Because everybody smoked because they didn't know... Right. They, didn't, they know didn't know. The, there was no studies of, like, you know, yeah. what's the end game of smoking all that stuff? Well, you get cancer. That's also part of the, you know, libertarian ideal. I'll extend. Okay. Uh, because the libertarian ideal basically wants uh, people to please themselves. So, in a way, that's kind of how tobacco's been done. I mean, there are sponsored campaigns that tell you about the dangers of tobacco. However, instead of outright outlawing it, we're basically taxing it heavier mm-hmm. uh, to cover things like medical expenses that are caused by it, as well as simply... <clears throat> um, letting people police themselves. It's like saying, okay, you're free to do this if you want to. And this is kind of where we're moving with things like um, marijuana and whatever. It's like, yeah, you mm-hmm. can do this if you want to. However, you have to take a certain amount of responsibility you have to pay for what happens to you by doing this. Yeah. But we're not going to outlaw it necessarily. We might legalize certain drugs <laughs> and whatever. But we're hoping that people will police themselves with the foreknowledge yeah. of what the risks are. To and doing and, these and it comes back to what Ed says. It's going to solve a lot of problems. I mean, if we... Uh, allow pot to be available everywhere, or just drugs in general. I mean, it's gonna take away a lot of the black market and a lot of the mm-hmm. money, the gangs and crime. Well, the war on drugs has cost us a tremendous. The important thing to me is the taking the violence out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because violence moved elsewhere. Okay, so we took the violence out of alcohol. It just moved to pot. It just moved to coke. It and, moved to heroin. You and know? to bring it back, that mm-hmm. might you know legalizing prostitution would take some of the violence out of that. Situation oh, I definitely well. think yeah. it would. So. Um, when I was in Korea, so where uh, yeah. they it was sort of legal when I was there a long time ago, many many moons ago, and they <laughs> the thing was <laughs> the thing is is that they had uh, doctors and they had to have cards that said they were clean. You know, they they regulated it, and if we regulated it here and and made it so, yes, it is legal, but like um, you have to, it's only legal in a brothel. Meaning mm-hmm. you get street walking is still illegal, right? And uh, I think that would work. Well, th- uh, too, too bad. Doesn't yeah, matter. Too yeah, bad. Yeah. Uh, games of chance vices. All right. So gambling. Vegas. Vegas, baby. Yeah. Speaking of Vegas, man, Vegas. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pharmacy in Vegas. Too. Pharmacy in my toilet. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what do you guys think of uh, games of chance as a vice? I mean, they're not legal everywhere, uh, but everybody Eddie, loves them. Can, can, but they're legal on, the on Indian reservations, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, because that's the way I think to skirt around the rules. That's become because abuse. People, well, because Taking back America, one nickel. Pe- ten. Well, no, it's because people are want to gamble and they want to yeah. stop going to Vegas right. and having to. So it's convenience. I think that's part yeah. of the thing too about just speaking it's, to regulating vices. Yeah. When people want it, they find a way. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, if they weren't going to um, Vegas or Indian casinos to gamble, then it would be people's parlors. You know, there would be illegal games. Everywhere. There was speakeasy gambling. There still is right. on the East Coast. We, we'd have poker nights. That's I had a friend game. that was uh, worked yeah. for a bookie. Actually, it's, it is legal. As long as the house isn't taking something, it's yes. legal. Well, you were... Although some would still consider it. Right. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I'm not taking a table fee. A, a rake. A rake. So to speak. Yeah. Or were you... So, there's no the pot, I'm trying to make some joke out of this, but I can't find one, right. so let's just keep going. Just add comedy, then it'll become a joke. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, it's a vice if it becomes a compulsion, because the illusion is yeah. easy money, and if you check out the odds, the house always wins. My prime example of this, on, okay, so there are two dice, six sides each, so if, if you hit, there's only one combination of two and one combination of twelve. So, out of six <laughs> dice, how many times is that going to come up? That was a Daryl fart. Cat. I don't know. One in 36. Daryl, right? you're But farts when you roll the dice cat. and you place the bet on the table, they're going to pay you 30 to 1. So, even if you hit the bet, they, they get a portion of your oh. winnings. So, that way, that's the, why the house always wins. Right. There's always something. But, to the sucker, it's the illusion of... <clears throat> it's the illusion of easy money. And it's mm-hmm. the lights that draw you. It's the food that attracts you. So well, I think I know why so many of these things are considered immoral is because um, without regulation, these things can easily be gamed way in the favor of the house. Right. Um, and, you know, you, you can think about, you know, people on the streets, like maybe doing a game of cups where, you know, they're like, we're which three one is card the Monty. Under? Yeah, three card Monty and all that stuff where they can use some sleight of hand and cheat Two people girls all the time. Cup. 
The thing is, when you have things regulated, <laughs> we're not you, linking to that. You actually will know or can find out what the house uh, odds are and everything. However, that being said, all of this is still kind of like you can look at gambling as being like a tax on the poor because the people who are least likely to recognize that things are always out of their favor and the ones who have the most to gain are going to be the poorest among us because mm -hmm. what they're going to look at is like, the hey, lights. I can buy a lotto ticket for a dollar mm -hmm. and I could be a millionaire next week. Right? Have a shot at 15. By the way, you just and only buy one. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, like, I don't know, but they might buy a hundred of them. But that, the thing is, like, it's like a, it's like a Lay's potato chip. The, the thing no. is, no, <laughs> you can. People it's in general nice. are bad with numbers, but especially if you, you know, are undereducated, you might think like, oh, I've got a, you know, fifteen million to one shot at this. It's like, well, that's not bad. Well, if the thing is, if you think you're going to win. Uh, in Vegas or at gambling casino, you you can't. You might as well just send them your money in the mail. It's entertainment. It is, and that Linda and I always said, right. when dude, we, when we went to <laughs> there's also we went to somebody Vegas, wants something. When there's we went also to Vegas, <laughs> that we, for, you know, we went to Vegas and we considered it like a video game, yeah, where yeah, the goal yeah. was to play as long as possible, not to win. But I think a, bunch a lot of, of people money. have that mindset, but also I think you know gambling addiction happens with certain people. <laughs> It, it yeah, the addiction. Really, is, well, and uh, this different. comes. I think this comes down to the next topic also, which is gluttony, uh, vices, opulence, waste, and overindulgence. That's what happens with gambling. Is it's it's an immediate. Look at this bowl that he's eating yeah. out of. <laughs> it was so Somebody take a picture. Overindulge. It so ostentatious. It's, it's immediate <laughs> gratification, like Ed just got right now. I got gratified <laughs> because we want it now. And the thing is, I wanted it now. When we're playing these games and we it. want it now, I, we're having a good time. Ooh, this is your Don't photo my yeah. thoughts. <laughs> All that right. Took, uh, a long time. But that's, that's, <laughs> that's just that's dangling. Remember, this dangling. is an dangling audio meat. audio podcast, so, people, not a video meat. podcast. A big okay. problem with hey, listen, gambling listen, with listen. the... It's an audio okay. one. Oh, so with the overindulgence oh, is, is how oh. it affects like your family and your life. Because you go down, you can go down that road to where, you know, I'm going to try to make this shady bet on this game. And you, you say, uh, I want to bet $1,000 on, you know, Lakers to win or something. And they give you that credit. And you lose. And you don't have the money to cover it. So you're trying to do another bet to cover the old right. the other bet. And, on, on, and you end up with your knees broken. Well, no, and I think that's why... <laughs> yeah, that's right. I think that's why these are vices and become a problem. Is because they're things that... that uh, that stimulate that part of our brain where we want more and we want to do it yeah. now and we realize yeah. that we can't control it sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so the people who want to better themselves go, oh, I have to control this for myself. But people who feel like they have to better society might start saying, I have to stop everyone from doing this so they don't do the right. bad things I did. And then you start getting these rules and regulations that maybe make these more of a vice or a, a regula well, more regulated than needed. If you look in history... Um, you can see many societies who let just let gambling happen whenever it wanted to and do, and you see we did move beyond gambling. Though. We're on gluttony and vices. Yeah. And oh, but still, go it's on. overindulgent. So we're still. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, so yeah. let's regulate if you, restaurants. If you if you want to regulate cards. vices, go ahead. Well, so what yeah, happens to gambling? You were saying? But oh, we we passed. Go ahead. There's no, over this is part of overindulgence. I wonder oh, what happens to gambling. All right. Well, the thing is, is that. Don't they fun. eventually, all the countries outlaw gambling because it destroys your society if you, gambling is allowed everywhere. Really? And that's why what you're going to find here in America is it's starting to spread. And it's not just the India can, Indian casinos now. They're starting to allow it in places all over well, America. But I would and say it's going to cause a huge financial burden but the thing, on the poor. The, the huge thing, too, is, is the unregulated gambling mm -hmm. There's no taxation. Right. That's what the government doesn't want. They want right. that little piece. So wait, are we saying so, gambling is not like drugs? Because I always thought it would be the same thing where you're going to get rid of the problems if you bring the gambling in let people gamble who are going to gamble. But you're saying... Well, I it's, think that it's gambling gonna... does cause certain societal problems because, again, like I said, it affects the poor the most. But does it yeah. get rid of the people and sort of a natural selection that maybe aren't best for society because they're making choices like this? Well, here's so the, we should uh, just kill them. Here's one of these. Well, no, they'll uh, eventually die off they'll because be they're not taking their EBT card. They, right, they'll be not, not taking care of themselves. But then, as a responsible society, we want to take care of everyone mm -hmm. who's. Well, yeah. there used to be uh, in the beginning of our country, so. there was lotteries everywhere. Every place had lotteries everywhere, 
and it caused a financial burden on our society. And so they outlawed them. For the longest time, you couldn't do lotteries except in very specific places. I'm so glad we're talking about overindulgence. <laughs> well, it is overindulgence. Okay. okay. Uh, one thing that I can add to this also is uh, cryptocurrency is allowing online gambling because oh, well, you can uh, basically set up a server offshore and not have to deal with U.S. regulations or regulations of any country if they don't have gambling regulations. And then you can do provably fair games that will reveal how the game was determined at the end of the day. So, so uh, it takes away the regulation angle like it self-regulates. Which vices do you believe harm people? And I would say Gail thinks, Kale thinks gambling. Am I right? You want to split the last one? Or? I oh, think sure. that uh, unregulated unre gambling is a very I bad thing. So if, ah. if everywhere gambling was legal, but regulated, would it be okay? No. Hmm. No, it wouldn't because it doesn't matter if it's regulated. If it's rampant, then everybody starts losing their money it just and, everybody and, who participates starts losing money. right and the problem is when it's everywhere everybody a huge portion of people start participating in that interesting i think it's different than drugs in the in the in the fact that we're we we don't punish the people who uh are gambling they where themselves. they used to punish them <laughs> by putting them in debtor's prison mm -hmm. and that was part of the reason why they realized this is not a good thing because then all of a sudden all the people who are supposed to be doing all the manual labor are in prison and so they needed to get mm. them in a better situation what if the government sponsored gambling That's so that all your money <laughs> was going to the government yep. which was in turn helping the society That's called the lottery Oh, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, and you know what happened paying. there, right? Didn't never went Those to school. lottery fins, no. funds. Half the lottery is supposed to go to schools. Yeah, That's what the hell? Yeah, you exactly. know what happened was mm -hmm. is because when the lottery passed, they're still getting that money from the lottery. But That's how Linda's paid too. When they uh, <laughs> when they in Sacramento what they did was they reduced the amount of money going to schools by that amount. Bastards. So right. essentially it did nothing so it's not for extra schools. Money. No. It's not extra money at all anymore. Yeah, because budgets can hey, be that's earmarked and everything, so they divert. Right, and okay. that's from so it's ridiculous. Hey, the okay. lottery doesn't pay a lot of people in this room. So gambling, <laughs> gambling, you True. think can be uh, harmful to society and to people. What else can be harmful? Obviously, drugs on an individual sure. basis. Yeah. But uh -huh. but what you're saying, what Caleb's saying is interesting. He's saying that he, uh, gambling and drugs can both be bad. Are both the things you make a choice for, like drugs are. Mm -hmm. But unlike drugs. Drugs being legalized would probably help society, but gambling would hurt society. Is there anything else, vices, that if, if not regulated or let to run wild would hurt well, society? I think I'm more Cop of the fighting. opinion that outlawing a lot of these things doesn't kill yep. very much of the demand for them. Mm -hmm. There's still going to be a black market for all of it. And then you, you basically wind up with things worse because you're spending all this money to fight. These things. Now you're policing it, and then you know, in this country, due process and what have you. Well, that that's why. Oh, you that's why I think Vegas is a great, a great idea too. and a great place because it's still legal. You can go do it. See, uh, but, but you have to, you have, you to, have to go there. You have to go there, and, it's and I think that's a, that's the important difference. Okay. Another another vice. I think that it does. Hurt I disagree with you, Daryl. I don't think it for would people be a good thing. Is the credit cards? All right. Mm -hmm. It's very easy for people, kids. Starting college to just get a credit card. It's jacked up, twenty six percent interest, whatever, and it's screwed. <sighs> Story of my college years. Exactly. Yeah, we've all been there, and it's just it. Yeah, talk about. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no. It, that, that's what destroys society. You're talking about yeah. this here. We have here, an here example. We go. Hey, I'm not just. <laughs> not, no, I'm walking down PCC. Hey, would you like a credit card for seven hundred dollars? Oh. And a free T-shirt. Yes. Yes. A T T Universal a credit card. Woo! Yes. <laughs> Why is he staring at me? Um, <laughs> and again, how much of um, economics is just gambling anyway? Because you're kind of you're gonna buy the stock stocks, market, right? Yeah. And you're just kind of gambling on the future. Now you might have well a well informed opinion of that, but then again, if you know the house odds, you have a well informed opinion. Well, see, that's like gambling. anything. Well, the, you can be buying baseball cards thinking they're going to be worth. Millions if you look at the monkey <laughs> investor, he's always he's just as good as monkey. the oh, uh, brokers. I splurge. So okay, um, I all over your your, your uh, my seat. Correct. So my next question is, Split. should vice law be changed? This is actually Daryl's question. Should vice law be changed? What should remain illegal? What should be made legal? And what are things? So we're still talking about the same thing here. Um, yeah, Kale? but now we're going to maybe talk a little more about you know what we think. So you're saying, you know, let's keep um, 
uh, gambling only in Vegas or only well, in certain areas. Well, Atlantic City, Vegas, just a few yeah. spots. So you have to work for it to go to it. You can't just be like, oh, I'm going to It's not just down the street. Here. Right. It's not something you can go to every well, day. That's going to be a, a big issue is because it's, it's just like the thing, like people want more prisons or whatever. You're going to want the type, the type of people that are attracted to gambling, the prostitution. Do you want that in your neighborhood? Right. You and want everybody those, says, you want not in my backyard. Not in my backyard. Yeah. Everybody yeah. wants it. But, Let's make it legal. But do you want... Uh, uh, pot place, a uh, pro, uh, pro, uh, chicken house, and and a gambling. Well, see, I'm not saying house. I'm not Whatever. saying doing that for drugs. I'm just saying gambling. Ga- I'm just saying yeah. for but, gambling. But, but he's got a good point because you're saying, well, do we want a pot place here? Well, let's say, I mean, we I think yeah, we you all, want a dispensary. Right, but I think we can all agree, cigarettes are pretty bad. But they sell cigarettes at any store you go to. And then we even say they're worse than pot. So you say, well, what about the, the people that the cigarettes yeah. brings around? Well, everybody's got it. So if there's pot available everywhere, it's there's not going to be separate places where it's bringing people in because it's more widely accepted. So I think if prostitution or pot was something that was legalized everywhere, then you wouldn't have, oh, it's bringing in this bad element because it's just everywhere. So I think it's a right. different breed of people when it comes to prostitution well, versus cigarettes. There are certain cigarettes. things, I mean, seriously, there are well, certain things. Yeah. When pot. have you seen an advertisement for heroin? Yet, yeah. what, where, where have you seen an advertise for that's pussy for sale? I mean, Craigslist. You don't, you don't. <laughs> yeah, but there's been, the point is, if it's something is good, they you did. don't need to advertise it. They didn't advertise well, it's not. They didn't, they didn't it. advertise, uh, well, the post office didn't need to advertise with Lance Armstrong. They're a fucking monopoly. You know, why do they need to advertise? So, yeah. uh,. No, no, but, but, but if something if, if it has its own demand, if it's its own demand, it doesn't require advertising. There's no been no advertisements but, for cocaine. But Paul's not no talking about advertising. He's talking about what element it brings into the area. Mm-hmm. And what but I'm saying is, is that if something was accepted everywhere, if prostitution was available everywhere, just like cigarettes are available everywhere, I'm not saying prostitution and cigarettes have the same type of people. What I'm saying is if is if it's accepted then it won't have the stigma of, oh, only the bad people are around prostitution. Everybody will accept prostitution. It's just something you can go do. Well, it's a, per- it's but, a perception. Everybody, it's it's widely, it's like lying. We we publicly, like, uh, dis- we publicly discourage it, but everybody lies. I mean, it's it's inherent to human nature. So is prostitution. Mm-hmm. Sex for, in exchange for something else. I think we wandered off the subject of what should be made legal and whatnot a little bit too. Well, that but, that that comes with time. And that comes with public b- belief. But to address like what Paul's saying, I mean, you're always going to have arguments in certain neighborhoods about bringing in a particular element. Like you know, uh, it's the same thing. Like what if they wanted to open a concert venue next door? Mm-hmm. Ah, good you know, point. Okay. Be like okay, now all oh, yeah, these, I see like, what you're saying. Crazy people on drugs are going to be hanging out yeah. in the neighborhood. Yeah, riff raff. And you know, what if it's going to be a sports stadium? Maybe there are going to be riots in the street after. Good the team point. Loses. So things need to be regulated. Like you, won't, you don't want a business next door necessarily if it's in a residential area. Right. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, okay. So I don't think that we necessarily have to differentiate between things that are considered vices and everyday stuff. I mean, every day you're going to have pushback from wealthy neighborhoods that don't want to see yeah. the property. But it's also stuff down. they don't want their well, kids that's to see. It should be legal. But regulate. Okay, so uh, what are the ethics of incinerating people for vice and frac? Uh, that'd be incarcerating. Incinerate, incinerate those bastards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Damn, what are you, Puritan? Yeah. I just Why you like yeah. this tiny bit. Yeah. 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 trying to predict the weather, mine. I mean. Uh, well, if they burn there, then they're not a witch. But Purified by <laughs> fire and brimstone. So, uh, incinerated... <laughs> I said it again. Yeah, he said it twice. <laughs> Incarcerating people for vice infractions, jail time for nonviolent or victimless crimes. Yeah. Well, I think it takes a big toll on society to have so many people locked up because they dealt a little pot during their life. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, yeah. And then also, like you mentioned before, Kale, all of the violence that's caused by the stuff being outlawed. Right. Um, you know, you have these turf wars and everything where you could have a much more humane turf Saint war Augustine between, against. you know, like, what are the, what do the turf wars look like it's between, like, Philip Morris and, and other cigarette it's all legal. manufacturers? It's all legal. So, you know, like, you don't necessarily have gang violence in the streets. Right, there, there's corporations. still wars, it's just, it's not Violent. physical violence, right. which I think right. is yeah. good. Well, you have people dying slower. And a huge amount of people that were, you know, spending 30,000 I think it's still, it may be even 35 by now, but it costs $30,000 a year to keep a prisoner in prison. 
Yeah. Like, it's the that, life. that seems low. That seems. I think it's low. more than that. Yeah. It's probably more than that. In now. California, last it's probably time, more. Last time I, yeah. I looked at it, it was 30, It cost us 35000 for the cable channels. That'd oh, so, well, I'm, I know I'm with you on, on the prison thing, Kale, where it should be isolation, you know, where it should be something you just put, they go here. No, you think it should be emolition. Ah, oh, <laughs> I got that. Uh, I that's that's fire, fire. Anyway, emolation. Emolation. Oh, because I say, said yeah, incarceration. I say, oh, that's that's the funny. I meant to say immolation is. because that's the right word. Anyway. <laughs> okay, but uh, I don't remember what I was talking about. You're, Immolating, you're, you're the play, incerating, play incinerating. Whatever. I'm just collecting my my vice. Okay. <laughs> it was actually it's a Facebook game. So it's a slot mice. machine. Oh yeah, Definitely. they can be. I'm building a world that means nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But when I'm playing it, it means everything. God you, guys the the you guys should see my amusement. You guys should see my amusement park. It it's is a vice, Joe. Awesome. I I, I don't want to see your. Amusement. Yeah, I don't but, want to see. It. <laughs> I don't want to see your cash and prizes. Either. This is where I, we have amusement. I'm not tall enough to go on that ride. There oh, be, oh, 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 yes, you are. There shouldn't be people shouldn't be incarcerated for a plant. People shouldn't be incarcerated for something that they do in the privacy well, of their own home. What what are they doing with which plant? I mean, if so, if you're putting, knocking someone over the head with the plant, if I'm putting probably, hemlock in your beer, I should probably be incarcerated for that. So I think it's not about being a plant. It's about it's about plant. harming it's others. Not, it's not naturalistic. I mean, you can have an artificial substance that is a drug, but. It's, I don't care whether or not it's natural. Yeah, I agree. It's the same like thing. It doesn't take, matter. Well, if you're going to do it to harm somebody else, yes, that's right. that's inappropriate. Yeah, but a lot of people who are into into the whole pot thing are all, oh, it's natural, and so it's okay. Mm. Yeah, well, so like you said, so it's hemlock. Oh, uh, what, what's the thing? Uh, God made dirt, and dirt don't hurt. And I always say, well, God also made uranium two thirty eight, which is highly radioactive. And if you were to eat that, you'd probably be dead. So <laughs> that's natural. Uh, what I usually you say, say, is the whole that. I gotta remember that. <laughs> what? That's been mine since high school. That's awesome. I've never heard of it. How could you not really? have? Yeah. Anyway, so just ask my wife. I say it all the time. She hates me for saying it. Hey, and if you think God said um, sodomy is wrong, he also made Uranus. <laughs> oh, up here. We named it. No, down there. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say that. <laughs> so, um, Thank you, Linda. So, uh, <laughs> so what were we talking about? Oh, I'm the host. So, uh, <laughs> Vice. <laughs> the, the, the rings oh, around the rings. All right, that was Vice's, and I have to say that was the most incoherent <laughs> of our ramble right. probably we're ever. on the street because last week was the most... Um, <laughs> the most um, insulting. Uh, no, that was two weeks ago. The most oh, insulting. Ago, huh? Yeah, that was like two weeks ago. The most insulting. No, no, insulting wasn't the word. It was the most uh, um, offensive. Offensive. Yeah. Thank you, sir. And now this Thank is you. the most incoherent because Eddie decided to have a cooking show in the middle of the <laughs> freaking episode. That was my vice. Okay. <laughs> Eating. And he didn't even give us. But then he got better. So then I got better, and I. I you want to hear I, my? I think. My, 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 I, no, no, no. Well, well let's finish no, this episode. Well, no, we're going to put it in the episode later. I don't even know what it sounds yeah. like. Okay. You put it in the episode. No, it's going to be yeah. in the beginning. It already yeah. happened. It already happened. Everybody's heard it, and you're just. Repeating them what's been heard. What? We left a space for it yeah. at the beginning. Oh, yes. They already heard it. They already heard it. And you're called so Miracle of Editing. <laughs> this thing called non linear editing. Oh, we learned about it in Dragon this, this, this is You know what, though? For so safety, no, it after the show, go ahead and play it. It'll okay. make you okay. very happy. <laughs> anyway, thanks for joining us uh, on Vices, which well, I, I think Eddie's going to be a good addition to this because as long as we can keep him under control, <laughs> not having his little we slides. We have to regulate <laughs> our Eddie. We need to regulate. <laughs> He's our Vice! Oh, yeah. He's, oh, who is in, who's Ed's editorial? He's yeah. Incoherent yeah. Rampling's yes. Vice. Okay, so uh, next week we are going to have Kale's Choice. Kale, what is your choice next? Week. Next week, we're going to talk because we talked about vices this week, so we're going to talk about punishment. Oh. Nice, all types of punishment. That's good. That's just what we were talking about isolation, so that'll be good Allowed for next to week. Be punished. <laughs> well, I am you going Paul. to punish you, you all. I'm going to punish you. <laughs> To Wait, he didn't put incinerate people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyway, that's going to be next week, and uh, yeah, remember you can reach us at uh, I am rambling. Dot com, or you can find us there, and our email is always is show at iamrambling.com. Uh, and, so, and like us on Facebook. And oh, please like, like us on Facebook and shit like that. Yeah. And <laughs> Twitter us to death. Yes. And look for pictures on Pinterest. Or Pinterest. 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 Yeah. I've been saying Pinterest. it correctly all week now until just now. <laughs> He's been saying Pinterest. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, so we will oh, see you next man, week. I've got a Pinterest. I'm Joey Shamel. 
Ed's editorial. <laughs> it's right here next to me. It's right here next What's to me. What's good? I like soup. <laughs> <laughs> and Paul Hottinger. Kale Anderson. And Daryl Jores. And remember, we're incoherent, Bromine. so you don't have to. What the hell was that? <laughs> that was his BR, Bromine. Oh. <laughs> B. Arthur, what? Bronco. B. Arthur. B. Arthur. Thanks, see you next time. Woo! Yeah. That's Parker. Thanks for listening. You can now stop screaming at the open air. Listeners should put their minds back in their upright positions and resume traditional thinking. Find us on imrambling.com for access to all of our weekly ramblings, show notes, general discussions, and any projects from Incoherent Ramblings. Like us on Facebook and rate us on iTunes. So long, and thanks for all the fish.